Thanks for joining us today for Jennifer Schaus and Associates in our webinar Wednesday program. We are coming to you live from Washington, D.C. Our webinars every Wednesday and are provided complimentary. They are recorded and can be downloaded from our website and YouTube channel, which now holds over 300 of our government contracting webinars. In the interest of time, we do not take questions, so if you have questions for our speaker, we will have his information on the last side of the presentation today. A special thanks to our educational sponsor, the National Veteran Small Business Coalition, for making these webinars possible. The NBSBC is the largest nonprofit trade association for veterans. Please visit their website for more information. And now a little bit about us. We work with U.S. federal government contractors, including products, service, and software firms. Our services range from market analysis reports to contract vehicles and compliance. More information is on our website. We also have opportunities for your organization to advertise in our newsletter. We now reach over 20,000 subscribers, and this includes both contractors and government. Contact, contact us for pricing information with the email shown on your screen. And now to introduce our speaker, Jay McConville. Welcome, Jay. We're glad to have you here with us today, and I'll turn the floor over to you. Well, thank you very much, and it's great to be here again with Jennifer Schaus and Associates for another uh, webinar Wednesday. This is my second one, so I'm so excited to talk about a subject near and dear to my heart today, which is writing winning proposals, a team effort. Uh, so if you could go to the next slide, I'd appreciate that. So uh, I'm uh, president and CEO of Privia. We work with a lot of proposal teams and a lot of companies that are engaged deeply in the business of pr proposing to uh, their clients. And from that, we've gained some perspective. So I'd like to talk about those today and hopefully it'll be a creative take on something that I know everybody is interested in being able to do. And that is putting together a winning proposal. So my first slide really is to get us thinking about what we all want. And certainly the dream is that everyone would, would be able to just push a button and create a proposal that would win. You know, push a button, get a Slurpee. You, know, you have data and knowledge within your organization. Wouldn't it be great to be able to just knock that out so you could bid, 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 and bid, uh, and really have winning elements come out of your organization. Unfortunately, that is really not how it works. Uh, and organizations that try to do this uh, often find uh, that they're unable to win, even if they increase their volume significantly. So if you could go to the next slide. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a role for automation. I'm in a proposal management software company. We absolutely believe in automation and the support automation can give to writing a winning proposal. So I wanna say that up front. Your organization, as it shows on the slide, has institutional knowledge. It has data, has documents, graphics, but it also has people and what's in their heads about, about the particular opportunity that you're bidding. So there, there is a, a role for automation. The most uh, obvious one is auto document creation uh, generation, and, and we support that for our clients. Uh, we have, for example, the ability to produce resumes from a database, or I should say a resume volume from a database, or a past performance volume from a database. Um, so that is all important, and we absolutely support it. And in fact, what we've learned, which we wrote in the book that we contributed to, Game Changers, for government contractors is that smart organizations really use this compute power that they have uh, where it works best, uh, and but really also focuses on letting the humans do what they do best. So if you go to the next slide, please. Because most proposals are actually complex endeavors and winning requires that you explain both what you can do, but do that in such a way that it relates specifically to what the customer wants, not only wants in terms of their specific requirement, but their desires, what, what end state do they want to create? And that really can't be done by pushing a button. Um, and it, but no one wants to start from an empty shelf. So they don't want to start from a blank page. So how do you bridge that gap? You know, we're doing more than just generating quotes. We're writing proposals that can be complex, so how do we tap into the institutional knowledge we have and still bring the people along? Next slide, please. So we're gonna talk about uh, four things today, four ways we think that, uh, you, that will help you achieve that. Um, because a winning proposal really leverages the technology that's available to you to build a collaborative team that can then Furthermore, leverage the organization's institutional knowledge against the requirement. So to do that, the first thing you've got to do is cultivate an online environment. 
You've got to then be able to leverage the data that you have, but be aware of some of the shortfalls into that. Get that whole thing running through a proposal process that, that ends up allowing you the time you need to focus on winning, and then review and review and review and, and massage that message. So the bottom line to us is winning a, writing a winning proposal really is a team. It takes a team to do it. Next slide. Now that team, uh, as we all know, in the days of COVID and our remote working environments, that team is highly distributed, most likely. Uh, almost everybody is now. So building that team uh, in this type of environment um, is, is a both an opportunity because it gives you the ability to reach into experts, people around the country, around the world, and bring them their knowledge to bear against your problem set. But there are also some challenges in doing that, which I'm sure everyone has experienced. So as before we entered into the COVID environment that we're in today, the workplace was becoming much more distributed. Uh, and now we've even put that on steroids. So there are some challenges that must be addressed in order to uh, take advantage of those opportunities. Next slide. The data shows that this environment is definitely here to stay. The chart that you see on the left-hand side on the top just shows the growth of online work. Uh, Full-time employees working from home has increased steadily uh, at a very steady pace since at least 2005. Um, there have been some corporations who have actually attempted to reverse that, to bring people back in to the office, and, and those, those initiatives have really not done, gone well. They have not halted the growth, uh, and people have resisted them. In fact, between 2010 and 17, 16 percent of you know the kind of people who are writing your proposals as white collar jobs, 16 percent of them are filled by people who work 100 percent remotely, uh, and that is increasing uh, every year from about two percent in growth to uh, in 17 was 5.5, and I'm sure I haven't seen the numbers for now, but it, it's I'm sure it's increasing. Uh, and for the kind of work that is performed you know, for people who have beyond high school education, about 46 of that uh, percent of those are working at least some of the part time from home. The chart down below is I think very interesting too. And then this really goes to preference of employees. Writing a winning proposal requires we have people and people uh, go to organizations and work for organizations where they enjoy their work. What it shows there in that chart is that being able to telecommute is very important uh, for people as a as a discriminator as to why they would take a job, especially amongst the younger folks, 18 to 34, uh, 86 percent said that that is a positive aspect and reason why they make it take a job. So Gardner tells us that all these large corporations, mid-side corporations are going to be bringing in the kind of content collaboration platforms needed to use these workers and they're going to do it uh, uh, soon. Uh, and you don't want to be on the back, the back side of that uh, industry development. Next slide. So how are we doing on that? Uh, first of all, uh, not so well in, in development of this virtual proposal team environment, the ability to leverage a team online, 85% according to a AIM, which is an industry association, 85% uh, of people are still using email primarily for the way they share files. And I'll talk to that a little bit more. 52% uh, of organizations have no cloud-based sharing standards, which means that their people are just going out and doing what they want. So they're using unsanctioned tools in order to do file sharing or online collaboration. Uh, in terms of the process, the middle uh, graphic there and how you move through your pro proposal process, 72% of the folks surveyed are still tracking status of their tasks and, and process manually. And those miscommunications and, and all miscommunications across the industry are very costly. And people really believe that it's a lack of collaboration, which usually leads to failure. So uh, if you look at that and then also tie that to what Harvard Business Review tells us is that 81% say that, you know, it's poor written material that wastes everybody's time. You know, how do you address this? How do you provide a better environment? Next slide. And we think the first thing you'd have to do is provide that cultivate or cultivate that productive online environment. And what we say at Privia is do it from the center rather from the sides. What we mean by that is grow the collaborative environment outward. 
into the experts that you have in your environment. And don't create a situation where one person in the middle is being peppered from input that's coming into them. If anybody's been a proposal manager who's on the line knows, uh, today knows that if you send a document out to 20 people for comment, you now have to put that back together and it creates a chaos in situation. So connect your people and your data from the center outward and be able to reach out and get information from those you need it from uh, instead of having it pepper one person in the middle. We, see, we think that that uh, productive online environment includes really three things. Web conferencing, like we're doing today, and that's spread very well, and people are doing that. Auto doc generation, as I mentioned before, the ability to use a database and some templates to produce a document, a proposal, or excuse me, a resume volume or a quote. Um, but then also add the third leg of that stool, which is content collaboration, so that your content, your data, your, pro your work product is uh, pulled into the center. So centralize that workspace, make it secure, make it anytime, anywhere for anybody, uh, and automate the things that make sense inside that. And that will give you a lot of great benefits. You know, we always like to say cheaper, faster, better is not possible, but in this case, you really can make great gains uh, by by actually taking the initiative to form this online working environment. Next slide. The second thing we would say is as part of that environment, you need to centralize your data. We mentioned that no one likes to write from a blank page. Your organization likely has data and content, past proposals, write-ups, white papers, RFI responses, et cetera, uh, that can be used and brought forward into every proposal effort. So the, the what you when you do centralize your content and bring it into an online data management system, the, what you'll see is that you can skip that blank page. You can have search, go back, find answers to questions. If you are asked to describe your systems engineering process, you've probably done that before. So you can search for that, bring it forward, and bring it into your new proposal and do that all online. People can do that from anywhere, which gets you to your first draft faster. Uh, in Privia, we have workspace templates, for example, so that you can actually deploy to an online folder environment templates that are already completed uh, or already set up. Uh, so when your people first arrive on the online environment, the template for the document or the spreadsheet or the graphic or whatever you want them to complete is already there that can be deployed ahead of time with the push of a button. So it gets you to that quick first draft and standardize those repeatable items. Uh, and, and for similar bids, this is very helpful. But we do always remind folks that uh, you have to watch out for the cons of doing this. When you do your data management in a centralized way, it is not prospect specific. You have to still bring the human element into that, the, the people to make sure that what you're writing hits is the story that the customer needs. You also have to tailor it and you have to watch for your compliance because the past proposal was different than the current proposal. And we make sure always to curate your content so that when your people search for something, they get something good and not something that was produced a long time ago and it's garbage and they're gonna pull it forward. So these are the things to look out for uh, in your online data environment. Next slide. Because the real challenge is the interplay. And this was what we talked about in our last Wednesday webinar that we did with uh, Jennifer Schaus and Associates, uh, but I'll bring it up again. Uh, as you go from your capture uh, effort through your proposal and submission, we believe in Privia, you really win in the handoff, if you will, what we call the intersection between the capture team and the proposal team, if they're not the same people. How do you get the, the information about customer intimacy, what the customer solution requirements are, what are the strengths and weaknesses of certain solutions? What's the customer's dream of what they really wanna get out of this um, acquisition that they're going through? How do you get that information into the minds of the proposal team? That is the intersection. And then you have to have interplay because that is going to go through a continuous review and revise cycle until submission. So setting up an environment that supports this, a more seamless interaction between capture and proposal teams will make sure that your quality proposal, uh, your ability to produce a quality proposal is increased. 
It will also increase the quality of your product going into your proposal effort and make reviews much less frustrating. So you always have to concentrate on that intersection and interplay. And that's why uh, we talk about a centralized data environment. Next. The third thing we'll talk about is workflow and tasks. Because workflow and tasks, if automated and, and enabled across your data environment, will allow your proposal team, your experts, the people writing, doing the, the uh, calculations, making the graphics, it'll allow them to focus on quality advice, the process. But let's go back. Workflow is incredibly important. I've been in this business for almost 30 years, and in the past, we all developed proposal processes, business development processes, capture management processes, and a lot of them were in paper form or they were in PowerPoint or whatever, but they were well thought through, and we want to make sure that we use them. Today's technology allows us to set up in the software a workflow capability that takes our team through that process so that we leverage it. You know, if the process is good, use it. So the software can help you do that. And that will keep everybody in sync and on track uh, and it'll allow you to avoid bottlenecks because people don't know where they are in the process. This also enables you to provide task information to everyone very easily. In fact, with an automated workflow, literally pushing one button, you can send taskings and instructions and documents and all kinds of things out to people instantaneously. And then you can track who, what, where, and whether they've done the tasks that they're on book to do. Uh, so it just saves you a ton of time while also keeping everybody in sync. And then the most important thing is to use that automation where it works well so that your team can focus on quality. Uh, you know, in 30 minutes today, we don't have a lot of time, but I'll just refer you to a video that we did on peeling the proposal messaging onion uh, at our website there is listed. But really, uh, those are the, the ways that we focus on win themes and discriminators and strategies and ghosting our competition so that our proposal is not just informational, but it is persuasive. Uh, so we are that enables our team, because we have automated workflow and we know what our tasks are, to focus on that quality, uh, to focus on the persuasive writing uh, that, that will win the job. Uh, the, uh, the key to that really is getting everyone rowing in the same direction uh, and enabling them to do their reviews in such a way uh, that they are being persuasive in their messaging. Okay, next slide, please. One of the things that we want to talk about is reviews. And I think that this is really a critical part of the proposal writing, as we mentioned before, that interplay, that ability to iterate the content of your proposal uh, and do so in a way that brings in the knowledge base of the people who know best what the customer is looking for, as well as people know best what your solution is. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, curated commenting at Privia. Uh, we the graphic that we're, we're talking to shows kind of how we used to do reviews. I'm sure there's people on the line who've been through this before. You know, there's a document, maybe it's even printed, it's given to you, you go through and you make your comments. Uh, in the old days, we used to do these in the margin of the document itself with red pen. That's what I'm kind of trying to show there. Or maybe we had a form that we were supposed to fill out that indicated what, what needed to be changed in that document. The problem with this, uh, it was bad. Uh, and, and you know, it was what we had at the time. But the problem was it led to a couple of things. One, the comments themselves tended to be uh, less quality because it was actually hard to just even get the comments in to uh, give them to anyone. And if you had to do it on a separate form, you know, it was a lot of writing and you forgot what it was that you were trying to say. So it really wasn't a good process. The second thing it led to was a nightmare of putting these uh, comments to back together uh, and influencing the, the final document or spreadsheet or whatever uh, based off of those comments. And what we found was that most of the reviews were wasted. Uh, a lot of the comments were useless and then the, and a lot of the comments, even if they were good, were not captured. So we moved from that because 
technology, we were able to go into what most folks are doing today, which is this um, track changes methodology enabled by email. And as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, this is still, I think it was 85% of the companies are still using this as their primary way to do uh, reviews uh, on, in the online environment if you're not getting together physically. The problem with this is it becomes, it's, it's certainly better, certainly better. Uh, and uh, certainly at Privia, we, we, we use track changes all the time. Uh, but it does absolutely have its limitations. Uh, what that enables is a lot of chaos to be done, uh, and uh, it gets very difficult for people to understand the flow of the document when there's so many track change annotations within it. I'm sure that you, those listening, have been in a situation where you've just decided to accept all the changes because you just don't know what you're reading anymore. Uh, so we want to get away from that um, methodology. The second piece is if it's not done in a collaborative online data environment, what happens is this document then gets broken up and forwarded around. Maybe it's an image, but a document, spreadsheet, whatever, forwarded around where people make their changes and then you have to merge back later. Now, merge documents works. I mean, Microsoft supports it and it, it does work. It, it can be very complex if you have a lot of people contributing. But here's where it doesn't work. There isn't a productive feedback loop. There is not a conversation going on about the different points that are being made. I'll give you an example. Let's say somebody finds something written in a document uh, and they really don't like that it's even there. You know, it's like this is not important and they strike it out. Uh, somebody else on the team may know that that was written in there because of something that client said or wanted, or maybe was even something specifically in compliance that was being addressed. The potential for missing that interchange, that interplay is high when you do merge documents. So what we propose is a better methodology, which we enable uh, through software, is a productive feedback loop where the discussion about reviews is actually a discussion. In the old days, the good thing was we were together in the same room. Let's say it was a red team review or a gold team. The people were at least able to talk and say, you know, we ought to do this and we ought to do that, and they would have a conversation. Now, as I already mentioned, they often fail to capture uh, the output of that uh, discussion, but should they have been able to, that discussion itself would have been highly valuable. So what we say is enable a productive feedback loop using curated commenting and a discussion format. To do that uh, on an, in an online environment that enables the people to talk about their uh, comments to their on the review and not just put them in a document. Okay, so uh, the bottom line, reviewing uh, is, is should not be a free fall. It should be controlled with tools and uh, track everything that's, re that's said in a review session. That's all possible today with today's technology, and it should be a continuous feedback loop. Next slide. Some of these ideas that we've talked about today, I just wanted to bring up uh, that we uh, have put in a book called Game Changers for Government Contractors by uh, Mike Lejeune and Joshua Frank, who put this together. There's a lot of great content in there. Uh, about uh, proposals, about business development, about specific kinds of contracts with the government, and et cetera. So I would just recommend that to you. It's an excellent source. Uh, but some of the couple, couple of things that we talk about in our chapter, I already mentioned that by 2022, organizations are going to use content collaboration platforms. So if you want to be on the leading edge of your industry, you need to get on board with doing that. Uh, people want to work in a flexible workplace. Uh, and they want to be able to work from wherever they are. Uh, and in fact, according to McKinsey, uh, if you connect your employees up, you can achieve a productivity increase of 20 to 25%. Well, that's a huge number when you think about it. If you're going from winning um, five proposals in a year to winning uh, 20 proposals in a year, uh, you'll see that that can make a huge difference in your organization. So our recommendation, uh, read the book, of course, but also make sure that you seriously consider a content collaboration environment so you can write quality proposals. Next slide. I'll just summarize. Uh, 
We think that uh, writing a winning proposal is definitely a team effort. The first thing you need to do is cultivate a productive online environment. It's not just about data, it's also about people. So make sure that you have web conferencing, auto doc generation capability, and a, and a centralized data repository that makes sense to your folks and you'll enable them to work in that online environment with each other and have a good conversation. Uh, but a key to that, of course, is centralizing your data. Have a curated system of content library so that your folks are able to go back and pull good content forward uh, and not bring bad content forward and then bring the people into that environment so that they can discuss. Don't forget about workflow. Workflow is critical to being able to task people, to give them the information they need and to keep the process moving. It drives the process forward and keeps everybody on task. Uh, and it also has the benefit of allowing you to focus on quality. And I, I think I forgot to mention one thing, so I'll say this here. Quality of not only of your proposal, but quality of your process. If you use workflow correctly, you will then have automatically provided to you metrics about how things are going through your proposal process. I failed to mention that earlier. So in other words, if your red teams are always late, or your finance review never happens because of time or whatever, you will see that because your workflow will be able to track those tasks and see that they never got done. Uh, you can even see who's late and you know who, who's not doing their tasks on time. So concentrate on workflow so that you can have tasks uh, associated with your proposal process and allow your people to focus on quality because it's all about quality, that's how you win. And lastly, and certainly not re uh, least, Review and massage your message all the time, anytime from anywhere. Uh, do it in a controlled and deliberate manner, uh, and you'll be able to produce proposal content uh, that is superior to your competition, and that's what everybody wants. Next slide, please. What we say in Privia is keep calm and proposal on, drive that process forward, concentrate on quality, and you'll win. So thank you very much for Jennifer Schaus and Associates for hosting me today, and uh, thank you for everybody for being online. Thank you, Jay, for a great presentation and sharing your time with us. And thank you to everyone who joined us. The recording will be on our website and YouTube channel within the next 24 hours. Please join us this Friday as we cover each part of the FAR and join us next Wednesday for more hot topics in federal contracting.